Welcome to the God of 666 Awards. No gloves, no ropes, and no harnesses in a stunt I call World War Z. Hey everybody, welcome to the 666 Awards. My name Woo! is Joe Stepik. I am one of the hosts tonight uh, for the Godless.com, Godless app, Godless platform awards ceremony. I'm the owner of Godless, and we want to take you through the best novel, the best anthology collection, the best audio book, the best novella, novella, novelette, <laughs> and short story as voted on by you. This is an equal opportunity award show where the fans actually vote for who wins. The only qualifications for this show were that you had your book at one time over the course of 2021 on Godless. That's all that mattered, you know, that automatically put you in the running. And if you did your own hype and you were badass and you got your friends and fam and everybody else to vote for you, you were in to be able to get into the 666 Awards. This is the first 666 Awards, and we wanted to make it a smash in success. Anyway, I wanted uh, my co-host to introduce yourselves for the big ceremony. Hello, I am Marion Echeverria, book reviewer on TikTok, uh, known as TF that I just read, and co-host of Mothers of Mayhem, an extreme horror podcast with this gorgeous lady. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Christina Pfeiffer, co-host <laughs> of Mothers of Mayhem. I don't have any fancy titles, I'm just me. <laughs> You're just crazins. <laughs> I, I don't feel like that's a secret. <laughs> that you're crazy? <laughs> that, 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 that's pretty common knowledge. Well, so. We like that you're crazy sometimes. I mean, Marion does talk a lot of shit about you. I she do. does. I see it. I see I it. Do. I Which do. Which is fine. I mean, it's all valid. All it's all, valid. It's all, it's all, it's all valid. true. It's, it's all, all true because <laughs> I started the rumors. <laughs> it's all fun and games for the most part. I just keep that mill grind. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all <laughs> true because I said it first. Uh, anyway. Uh, all girl. What are you guys wearing today? I'm wearing this is. Uh, Penguin Munsing wear. This is godless. This is godless. I was nice. wearing these white skull pants, but I took them off because they were a little damp because I spilled Ooh. Korean barbecue on them on Friday night and then I couldn't really get it all out. So, dag it. There's that. Uh, what are you wearing, Christina? Uh, I think I got this from Dollar General. So, nice. is, that, is that true? If that is it true, it is true. Mention. It is true. And a little bit of boobage going on, more than my husband's seen in three years. So, <laughs> and, uh, just for this. So I that, know, right? That top cost you a dollar? No, not Dollar Tree, Dollar General. Dollar General, I think it cost me like five, maybe six dollars. And it so goes all the way down. It's like super long. It's really cute. You don't want to see the rest of it because it, it shows that I'm not skinny. So we're just going <laughs> to keep it up here. Where's the good stuff? Fuck. You know, the, the Dollar Tree has raised their prices, and now it's like a base uh, yeah. of $1.25, and now everything Trash. they stand Trash. for is a lie. Yeah. I, I essentially buy all my clothes on eBay. So I think I think nice. this I think this blazer probably cost me like uh, 30 bucks max. I love the sear sucker. I, I do too. Cannot beat it. For the summer, it's perfect. It is bitching. So uh, <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> Marianne. I am wearing a Godless Horrors original. 
which I then have uh, customized to my own liking. I fancied it up for the occasion. It's pretty fancy. What do you got in the sleeves there? Oh, uh, little red bows. <laughs> bloody Kleenex. Kleenex. I got right. bloody yes, Kleenex. Yes. Dyed red, red cotton fabric dyed in the blood of mine enemies. <laughs> you fucking cokehead. <laughs> 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 it was Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> right? She all lies. All lies. I you need snorted to, need them. I, I I snorted the ash of my enemies, and then I that's smart. Snarked it all out into a tissue, and then this is what I'm. This has gone off the rails so fast. I oh, don't have time did, did you did you think anything was going to be <laughs> not off the rails? I'm surprised that we've stayed on track so well. Like I I'm actually surprised. think we've done a good job of staying on track fairly well. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. The first award on the 666 Awards is the award for best short story of 2021. I think that you guys know that there were a ton of short stories that came out in Godless this year. And even when I was voting, I, I was just like, I didn't even know where to begin because it seemed like each one of them kind of represented a different week or day for me, right? And so I, I felt touched by so much of it and I didn't want to like really choose one, but unfortunately that's the way an award ceremony works. It's a dopey popularity contest and we had to choose. I'm not going to say what my favorite short story was this year, but I will <laughs> let uh, Marion and Christina tell me what really sang to them this year. Oh, there's oh. so many, that's the problem is it's not just, you know, five or six and you're like, okay. I mean, there's so many. I mean, let's talk Benetti. Let's talk Hawker and Macari. Let's talk, you know, I mean, I can't pick just one, damn it. No, it's tough as fuck, dude. Mm -hmm. Right, Marion? I'm gonna have to focus on Rain Havoc, Daniel Volpe, and Sean Hawker. Uh, so, Mukbang Princess from Rain and Furry Beaver, mm -hmm. Fish Pie Face Buck from mm -hmm. Hawker, and yep. Strawberry Shortcake from Wolfie oh. were oh. some of my very first godless reads. And I was like, this is magic. What is this? I didn't even know this stuff existed. <laughs> right? It's legal. Uh, <laughs> I, I absolutely, I absolutely fucking love Furry Beaver. Oh my god, I love it. I yeah. think about it all the love time. <laughs> yeah. Don't even ask me why, but there'll be like random days where I just think about that fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> me okay, me so too. Good. It just okay, comes up in thought, random thought. <laughs> so anyway, here is the winner of Best Short Story 2021 for the Sixie Awards. You guys, Mukbang Princess being best short story of the year, absolutely unbelievable. Um, thank you for voting for it. Thank you for showing it love and sharing it and talking about it and making it what it is today. Um, I appreciate it all. Uh, thank you, especially to Simon McCarty, who talked me into joining the Godless fam so that I could get this little pink bitch on there day one. Uh, special thanks to Drew, who does all the hard work and makes everything possible. We appreciate you. Thanks, you guys. Uh, congratulations, Drizzle. Uh, you're awesome. There's a kind of a weird story about this. The, the, the weekend uh, before uh, Godless launched, it launched on a Saturday night at, I think, 10 or midnight, Sunday night, I mean. Uh, Rain sent me all her stuff to put up on the site that Saturday and I was sick as fuck. And so we had this kind of like strained relationship in the beginning of our friendship it was really funny. And I called her the 11th hour girl because I'm sick as fuck. I'm trying to get all this other shit done. And I got Rain stuff up and I didn't even know what the 
fuck Mukbang Princess was. So I put that thing up and it went on to become like one of the best sellers on the site <laughs> continuously always people always fucking buy it. it it's such a draw it has a lot to do with that pink cover but it's also got a ton to do with the story and that rain just came in not out of nowhere she already had an established career before this but just blew up man it, it was yeah. it was it was such a fantastic gift and I look back at it and I feel bad that I was being short with her when we first became friends because that's kind of what happened. And then the, 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 it went on to this other thing between Rain and I, we had this this cover thing. I said, I want to design the cover for Furry Beaver. And I sent her something that looked like a Tiffany box. And she's like, fuck you, we got this other, <laughs> we got this other this is a great story. So we've had this back and forth over the entire year about Covergate and stuff like that. So it's ah. pretty funny. What did, what, did you, what did you guys think about Mukbang Princess? I remember being absolutely horrified. Absolutely right. horrified through the whole thing as I realized what was happening and then I closed it and I was like, that was fucking incredible. It is incredible. Right? The yeah. com it's the commentary on social media and how our younger generations are being desensitized to the things that they see online. It started with us in the 90s with certain websites we would go to to mm -hmm. look for the really sick shit. And these kids just have more and more access to wilder and wilder stuff. And it just really spoke to that. And I was like, this really, truly is horrific. And not only is the act horrific, but the response to the mm -hmm. act by the children watching it is even more horrifying. I freaking love it. Christina, thoughts? And for me, um, this story was my first by her that I read, and she single-handedly got me reading female authors again. Really? I, I would not I would not give female authors a chance because it was either the damsel in distress or the I don't need a man type of deal. And I was like, I don't. I'm not either of those people, so that's annoying to me. So I wouldn't read female authors. And she single-handedly, and I've told her this, um, that she single-handedly got me reading female authors again. So now I read, you know, Lindsay Crook and everybody else. So yeah, she, she did it. Yeah, I, I, I think that she really kind of single-handedly kind of like relaunched this genre of like true badass women. Uh, yes. And, yes. and, it, and it, it's, it, it's less like a, I spit in your grave and it's like really more like uh, kind of pop culture-y and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and really in uh, what, we're, what we have going on in the real world right now. And I just think it's stellar. I, I think yeah. everything about her is stellar. And mm -hmm. just like I said, if I could take back all that shit about me being a pissy, sick little asshole, I would. <laughs> and Drizzle, you know that I fucking love you. You know how much I love you, girl. I do. And she knows I'm obsessed. She knows I'm a fan, girl. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, there's, there's going to be a, a copycat fiction when, when something breaks that is as original as hers. Yeah. And uh, we should commend that and support it. Uh, I, I don't think copycat was necessarily the right word. I think that when you create something this original with, somebody, mm -hmm. uh, with such an original voice, that people are going to want to be a part of that because yeah. it comes yes. off as more of a comes off as more of a, a movement uh, yes. a, 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 away from like you said damsel in distress yeah and mm -hmm. super hardcore fucking rape horror and shit like that yeah so yeah yeah i just think it's awesome and congrats rain Woo, rain! I'm, so, I'm so excited you are a very dear friend and an awesome fucking human being period we love you This is the award for the 2021 Best Audio Book. You can listen to it, kids. You can listen to it. Uh, audio books have become really, really, really popular. And uh, I'm just going to say this up front. Knuckleball, although it should have won this category, <laughs> did not. So, spoiler alert. Right? I got fucking pummeled. This was the... Uh, the most difficult category, and it was the most highly contested and closest. 
because of the amount uh, of really, really high quality cool shit. And people started doing these earworm books and things like that. So, uh, best I, what was your guys' favorite audio book this year? Oh, anything by the professor. I was gonna say, you know, the professor, not only is he a brilliant writer, mm. but he has a way of narrating his books that is just, it's captivating. It's practically hypnotizing. And it's hot. Can we please just talk <laughs> about how hot it is? Like, he, he was saying one and I was just like, whoop. And I'm like turning red and I'm in my own house. Like nobody can hear it. And I'm like blushing and I'm like. <laughs> his freaking meter is so sick, man. Mm -hmm. And his prose is too. And I think that yeah. once people look at it, you know, and, and really take it in and let it get in their mind, that's why I've always been a way bigger fan of uh, reading literature as opposed to audio. Books. Right. So, all that said about the incredible new voices that we heard through audiobooks, here is the winner of the 2021 60 for best audiobook. Hey everyone, John Baltusberger here. First, I want to thank everyone who voted for Unclean Verses, and I definitely want to thank the other contenders in that spot. Being able to stand next to authors like The Professor, Drew Stepik, Lucy Leitner, it's really an amazing honor to be a part of this community. I am so humbled that you guys voted for me, and I can't wait to see what the next year of innovation and horror looks like. Thank you. That category was insane. Vicious, vicious. Insane. Yes. And 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 I, I I don't obviously would never want to take anything away from uh, John because he does this in, incredible poetic, uh, almost hip hop sounding uh, audio reads, mm -hmm. and it's just like I. I I wouldn't have called it out of the gate that he was going to win. I didn't think Knuckleball was going to win either, but I thought that the professor was going to win because he built such a devoted audience mm -hmm. in such a short time. You know, um, I think what might have happened is since you can only vote on one thing, and I think the professor had three or four uh, audio books mm -hmm. up there, I think that he might have cannibalized himself. Yeah. Um, but but uh, obviously not taking away. I mean, John fucking crushed it with this book. Yeah. This oh. book is so fucking outstanding. And oh. if you have not read this or listened to this yet, you have got to. You know? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I have thoughts about this recording. It is, it is very raw. Yeah. And it is very passionate. And it feels very real. Mm -hmm. So when you listen to this audiobook recording, you don't feel like you're listening to a narrator performing a book for you. What you feel like you are experiencing is the actual voice of the character and all of his anguish and all of his agony and all of the real emotions that he is to, and he talks about horrific, horrific things that he feels compelled to do. And all of that rawness and all of those jagged edges are in that performance. And I think that's why it stood out because it just feels so real. Yeah. And it doesn't have that, that over stylized feel to it. And it's just, it's raw. It was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, it's just like, did you guys hear that um, that album that Jay Z came out with? Let's say four or five years ago, he came out with this album, uh, and one of the big songs was like the story of OJ or whatever. Uh huh. And, and, and when I listened to it for the first time, I was listening to it through headphones. It made me uncomfortable because I felt like I was intervening on his life. And, yes. And I, yes. I, I felt like I was a fly on the wall, and I didn't deserve to be there. Yes, you know what I mean? 
that is how this feels. That's exactly like you listen, how this feels. You are listening to somebody who is decompensating, who is falling apart, who is ill, and just going deeper and deeper into this madness. And it is amazing. Yeah. Best novel. The 2021 60 for best novelette. Let's discuss, man. Also, a huge category that mm -hmm. was fairly closely fought. There was a lot of stuff that came out this year, and several things, even from me, which didn't place. Fuck all you guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, 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 the entire scumbags first season. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was just a massive category. It was and, insane. And, and and some of the, some of just the best uh, medium length fiction that I've read maybe ever. Yeah. Uh, outstanding work from everyone. What really touched you guys this year? For me, it was probably Casey's Vengeance by Havoc because it was the prequel to um, Killstream. Killstream. Yeah. So we get to dive a little bit deeper. Yeah. Like, it's like Obi Wan, right? <laughs> what about I you? Have, I Aaron? have to focus on Killstream. I really enjoyed Casey's Vengeance. I was like everybody else. I think looking forward to Casey's Vengeance, but uh, I was late to the party on Killstream. And when I finally read it, it was it was like a revelation for me. I loved everything about it. I also have to give mad props to Hawker and McCarty. Like, they're oh. my boys. Every no novelette that either of them write, either separately or together, I am so... Uh, Aussie sickos. I read that on a plane. <laughs> By person. Simon McCarty. I made such a oh, mistake. Oh, my God. Like, that book was like taking a baseball bat to the head, and I yeah. loved every single second of it. So they, uh, oh, oh, my boys. <laughs> yeah, that, the, the great thing about this past year in novelettes is it wasn't a really, uh, wasn't a really popular format uh, before. But, but now, right. on God, now on Godless, it's like everything. If, if I had to shout one thing that really touched me and I, and I felt really got under my skin. It would it would probably be Pink by Shoepet because that story oh. was just mm -hmm. absolutely mind bending. And when he sent me the oh. manuscript for it, I was just like, dude, I, <laughs> he just knows his craft so well, and he knows how yeah. to really make a story fucking sing and really kind of like pull the rug out from under you and go against the grain. I mean, he went against the uh, the essentially trappings of who and how it all worked. He went against the formula. And I had no problem with it after I read it because I'm just like, yeah, this is like a really good episode of Twilight Zone, man. Yeah. But uh, very hardcore. I, I also got a shout out Skin Deep from fucking Scumbags Burn in Hell by Mill Iron. Mill Iron. Mill Iron. Skin I can't Deep talk about is it. amazing. And uh, Trap House. Right. By the one and only Drew okay. Stepik. Yeah. When I you know, think about the fucking scumbags burn in hell series, those are the two that that stand out to me the most. It's pretty cool. Like I, those are the ones that pop out in my head. Like they stuck with me. Uh, so I, I so it's funny you brought up Skin Deep because I put in contacts today and I haven't I haven't been wearing them at all because of Skin Deep. But, <laughs> but, but when, I, when I was when I was coming to record here, I was getting like this fucking glare from my monitor. So I'm like, fuck, people aren't even gonna be able to see my eyes. So I put them in. And I'm sure Mill Iron's gonna give me fucking be pissy with me about it because I have I have never worn glasses so much my entire life. Uh, right? Because I, I after reading that it just fucked me up in the head. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I it's, oh, I can't. Contact. It's, like, it's like my one thing. That oh, Marion, I can't. Oh, I can't. I don't care for that. <laughs> <laughs> So who won, Drew? Who won? Okay, let's do it. Yeah! Oh my God, this is crazy. Um, Casey's Vengeance being best novelette of the year is absolutely unheard of. 
um, mostly because it shouldn't have even been born after Killstream got um, evicted from Amazon. There was going to be no more, but Drew picked her up and gave her a place to stay and uh, I was able to get the prequel out and I appreciate all the votes for it, the love, everything that the readers do, other authors, Drew, Godless. What a good family. I absolutely love this. Thank you guys. As if we didn't talk about it enough right before we announce this award. Casey's <laughs> Vengeance, The Drizz, Rain Havoc with two fucking awards. That's best oh. short story from Mukbang Princess and best uh, novelette is Casey's Vengeance. I think it's Vengeance. Casey's Vengeance. It is. Yeah. I, like made a song, I made a song for that book when it came out. Probably one Casey's of the most anticipated releases oh, for from sure, last year. Yeah. People because like, we oh, all so just, cool. as soon as we heard about it, we were like, oh my God, hell yes. We're going to find out how this all started. She kept that under wraps for a long time. Oh. You know, I knew about it, but I didn't open my mouth. I think she was surprised because she knows I got a big ass fucking mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Rain Man, Rain Man, Rain Man. Thank you so much for everything awesome. you have done for Godless, everything you've done for the horror community, and everything you continue to do for yourself. Because these books, they don't come out as often as everyone else's, but I mean, when they do and there is a drop, they're oh, always spectacular. Gosh. And that's super appreciated, and especially this book. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think we all just talked about how much we love this book uh, before. Um, again, Rain. Great fucking work, man. Great fucking work. Boom. Best novella. Sixty for best novella. Another just nuts category because so yeah. much good shit came out. Like if you think about all the authors who actually released novellas this year. The, the, the list is almost endless. And this yeah. is a way more popular format than uh, novelette because mm -hmm. people really want to dig their teeth and get towards that novel length, you know? They really want to get something of substance and really develop everything. And I, once again, I, I, I would struggle to choose what I think is the best uh, novella of this year. Um, fans voted. Uh, what did you guys think about the novellas this year? They're, they were fucking incredible. Oh my God, of course. Absolutely. One of the most, uh, uh, the ones that stand out for me the most was The Captive Dwarf by Sean Hawker. <laughs> I right. freaking loved that book you mean, so you mean, much. You mean die, you fucking cunt? Yes! No, right? <laughs> it, it, it's I funny. Used the, I used the Amazon appropriate. Right. So. It's so funny. When I, when I first met Sean, he was he was promoting the Captive Dwarf online, said he was going to put it in Amazon <laughs> and shit, and he had this cover. And I reached out to him and I said, Sean, man, uh, can I take a pass at that cover? Uh, it looks like a skateboard deck to me. So I, I redid the cover for him, and then I told him, uh, well, he asked me, he said, can we release it on Godless? Is die, you fucking cunt? And uh, I said, of course, man. It's gonna be hard to, as fuck to promote, but uh, I, I think that that's a good idea because it it comes off as what the true intention of Godless, the original intention was, was to do an alternative, right? Yeah. If you wanna release a book on Amazon and call it something called The Captive Dwarf, and then you wanna release something on Godless that's the same fucking book called Die You Fucking Cunt, do it, dude. I mean, that's that's just like, it's a it's a dual revenue stream and you get the best of both worlds that way right yes i also got a shout out ash eric Moore in every single oh, yeah. smalls book yeah every Not single smalls book the smalls family question. series has been outstanding and of course my particular favorite which is valentine obviously <laughs> because, uh, she be me and it just ash like rocks my fucking world but that i can't get enough of those books I can't. ash is so awesome like it, oh my god uh, yes the, the, the volume uh, uh, that he puts stuff out mm -hmm. uh, when when I, when I originally connected with him uh it was kind of weird because he had no social media presence and and yeah. then i i think that 
kind of because of Godless and kind of because he wanted to really promote himself uh, and, and really get out there, he joined Facebook. I, I don't know if he had ever, he might have a long time ago and then quit, but he came back and, and just all these great things and the volume at which he's putting stuff out is just outstanding. Mind boggling. I wanted to know that I totally appreciate the, the, the absolute quality of everything he releases. Every single thing. Because he yes. does his own writing, obviously, his own writing, his own editing. He does his covers. Like, oh, and dude, his covers are outstanding. He's like a Renaissance man. He sends, yes. me the, he sends me the layered files, the, the Photoshop files. And it, he is such a good, good, good like uh, yes. design person. Yes. He just he, he 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 knows the ins and outs of Photoshop and Illustrator, and uh, it's appreciated because I, yeah. I I love getting layered files to to create uh, social assets for and banners because when I get that stuff from Ash, I know it's going to be so high quality and so outstanding that it just rocks my world, yeah. and it's just beyond, you know. So let's go on and announce this. Sexy award. This is for best novella 2021. Bye. Hey, it's the Hawkman here. I just want to say thank you to all you sick motherfuckers out there in the ether for having voted Neil to win best novella. It was a big surprise to us both. It was a labor of love, and Simon and I put our blood, sweat, tears, jizz, and an assortment of other bodily fluids into the writing of it. And for it to receive such a positive response is both humbling and gratifying. Don't worry, there's plenty more fill from us both yet to come, and we look forward to grossing you all out in the future. So cheers, everyone. Many thanks. You filthy maggots gave me an award, eh? He was a love letter to all things wrong and sticky. He's that wank you have while you're sniffing your mother's dildo. The shot you do when you're wearing white leotards at a yoga class. Neil would never have been possible without my partner and all things dirty Sean. The devil's den godless, and most importantly, those with a sense of humor who like to walk on the dark side. I'm telling you guys, you've seen nothing yet. Sean and I are just stretching our legs. I can't I mean, say, I can't even say enough good things about these two fucking mm -mm. relics. Nope. I, I mean, Steep, steamed vaginas. Yeah. Who so doesn't watch steamed vaginas? You know? Just say, it, it's, I really find myself at a loss of words just because, <laughs> these, I, I do. Not, not, yeah. not because of the content, because of these two guys and, and how much, they're phenomenal. Love them. How, much, love how much they mean to me personally. Yeah. Simon was, uh, of course, one of the very first people to sign up for uh, for Godless and get on the platform. And he has just been 100% behind me in everything since day fucking one. And I, I yeah. just I just love the guy to death. I really, really honestly do. Uh, you know, he was having a difficult time because he was one of these authors that was getting deplatformed everywhere because of Mother Maggot. Yeah. And I really wanted to be a part of that because the phenomenon behind Mother Maggot let's say December and January of uh, 2020 and 21, it's just, that seemed to be at the time all anyone was talking about because it became this notorious entity almost immediately. Yeah. Uh, and, and then Simon just started dropping all these great books. People feel such a connection to him and his writing, even though it's yeah. so offbeat and fucking weird. I mean, I personally loved Pitbull probably the mm -hmm. most. Uh, because it reminded me of Plague Dogs, uh, but just gross. But, you know, Neil was fucking awesome. And I, and I think that it, because it was the first uh, book written by these two together, yep. mm -hmm. who these two who met through Godless mm -hmm. yep. and the Godless community, it just says something. And, and the fact that people really came out and voted for this book, it, it's one of those things you just... When I'm, when I'm looking at the votes coming in, I see Neil, 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 Neil. It's just like, man, that makes me so fucking happy. Because yeah. these, these guys are just such rad dudes and these incredible talents, you know, that would maybe wouldn't necessarily have a spot to really mm -hmm. kind of like broadcast what they're putting out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's so fucking wild and offbeat. And they... They never really censor themselves, uh, but but that it's not just about being gross. They they 
they are very good fucking storytellers. And I just, I love you guys. I really do. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean to sound like I'm being a kiss ass, but I, I just think you guys always bring something very special to me. Uh, you guys always had me participate in your books. Um, and it, it just means the world to me. It, 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 it does. It, it's just like the thing with rain, right? It's like, you know, I honestly, it, if you were to look at this award ceremony and, and reflect on kind of like what the platform was built on and who kind of like really got involved and really mm-hmm. planted their feet in it. It's like people came out and voted for those people. And, and yep. I think, and I think it was less about a popularity contest there. And it was more about just the scope and quality of their work yeah. constantly. And that says something about this community as well, you know, that we're, we're in this together and we don't necessarily have to pick fights with each other and be assholes to each other. We can get behind what we honestly think is best. And it lets us let down our guards to say like, you know, like, 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 like me with John, it's like, would I have liked to have won for Knuckleball? Sure. But I'm su- I'm probably I'm probably much happier for John. You know what I mean? Because he, he gave me something really fucking special. Yes. And and Simon and and Sean, whether it's they're doing their solo work, Hawkman, or they're or they're doing, you know, their their collab work. It's just it's outstanding. Yes. And whenever they hit me up on Messenger and shit, it just makes me so fucking happy. Because they now always, they're an unstoppable duo. They're they're killer, dude. They're fucking <laughs> yeah. killer. And it's and only that, going to with them, it's only going to get progressively more close to the apocalypse for yes. yes. Because yeah. I I'm a huge Simon is one of the reasons that I'm still continuing to review. Because he was he was like my first reviews. I would write like letters, like letters to him about how he was ruining my life and he was going to turn my daughter into a stripper named si- uh, Simone McFarty and that my son was going to go to prison because he stabs people and you know so I I'm a huge fan of Simon and Sean like Simon and I we send memes back and forth to each other that are absolutely inappropriate yeah and I, and I, I think that uh, Simon uh, offering to start collaborating which is yes. something that's been happening happening a lot on yeah. Godless, which is awesome. I mean, Amazing. I, I, I had never collabed before last year with fucking anyone. I was a total asshole about it, and, and I never did it. And I started doing it, and it completely changed the way I write. It completely changed my outlook of the community, and it's just stellar. And the, the fact that he wanted to work with Sean, because they, they actually do kind of share the same mind, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and that, that shows up in their work is just... It says something about what we created, but it also says something about the creators and the, and the outlets and the different ways that people are pumping out work. And I fucking love it. I love these guys. Congratulations so much. Neil, best novella of 2021. Best novella The 2021 Best Anthology or Collection. This is a 6 award. This is a very, very awesome category. And another one that was so, so, so close, man. Uh, it came out of the wire. I, I don't want to reveal who were really up there, uh, but I will say that uh, I, I was very pleasantly surprised by the winner. What did you guys really like this year? Anthologies and collections. Did either of you guys read the uh, the Jewish Book of Horror? Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Which was fantastic. Um, I also really loved Czech Extreme. Yeah. Mm. From Madness Heart, uh, Baltusberger and Ed Lee. But without a doubt, for me personally, Nick Robinson's Same. Caution May Cause ocular bleeding it set the bar for me nobody exceeded it like i loved it i 
love it. I bought the digital. I have the paperback. I I bought the paperback because I bought the digital. Like, it's just so good. It's so good. You love that fucking cover. Oh my god, I fucking do. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Boom. Boom. That tracks. <laughs> right? It makes sense. Makes sense. Fucking amazing. Christina, do you do you agree? Was that your favorite oh. too? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Really? I mean, it wasn't. To me, it wasn't even a competition, and I feel bad saying that, but it wasn't. Okay. Well, here is the winner for the sixty for best anthology or collection. When Drew reached out to me and told me that I would be having to make this video and the reason behind that, my first response was to ask him if he was fucking with me. Uh, anyone who knows me shouldn't be too surprised by that response, but as it turns out, he was not fucking with me after all. So I uh, honestly don't even know what to say, I didn't expect this. I just want to thank Drew for making Godless a thing, uh, for bringing so many different people together, and for creating kind of a community for our dysfunctional little family. Uh, I want to thank everyone who uh, took the time to vote for uh, my little collection of stories and who enjoyed them. Uh, it means the world to me. I do want to thank the uh, Mothers of Mayhem for uh, hosting this wonderful little thing. And, uh, well, there's more to come. I'm not really talking about any of the stuff I'm working on right now, but there's definitely more on the way. And I hope you're able to enjoy it as much as you did this. Thank you. Surprise! We told you what it was. Yeah, all right, look, at, look at all these Fucking smart people. Spoiler alert, you idiots. Oh, look at all these oh, smart look. people who agree with look, us. Look, yeah, see? I went, you know what? I originally wanted to do this whole show in like like old timey movie talk <laughs> voice. Look here. <laughs> look here, Christina. You don't know what's going on, see? That would have been so fucking annoying. Ah. Probably probably would have been less annoying than what we decided. What do you say? Really Throw. <laughs> what are you doing? Marion, you look here. What you doing there? What you got in the sleeves? Huh? What you got in the sleeves? Anyway, Nick Robinson. Fucking love the fuck out of this guy. The yep. most the, the fucking gentle giant, the godless, the coolest fucking dude. The mm. most awesome fucking kind of come out of nowhere. It was another one of these things when he came to me. Uh, I was familiar with his book that he wrote in from Madness Heart Press. Mm -hmm. uh, You'll be consumed. Yeah. And then he came to me with horseplay and I'm like, what the fuck is this shit, dude? Oh my God, and so and we, we, had, we had back and forth for a while and he sent me this cover that had like a horse in a pasture. It was like a water cover. And I'm like, dude, let me fucking take a pass at this. It's the worst because I do that all the time and I feel like I'm being such a fucking prick to people. Hey, let me take a pass at that, dude. That ain't going to fucking sell. Anyway, sorry, Nick. I don't mean it that way. Um, <laughs> He brought it you to won. me. It's okay. We we put, we put out horseplay, and the fucking rest is history, man. Yeah. And then he came out with this book, and fucking a lot, a lot, a lot of people, including both y'all, loved mm. it. Yep. Fucking loved it. Yep. Uh, I think he's in another one of these super unique voices. Yeah. And uh, I think people get behind that because we need more. Yeah. I, I, Where I, have you been, Nick? I he's been kind of quiet lately. I know. Uh, he's, he's, he's got a second dog days coming out soon. Oh. Good, good. And even like his older stuff from like 10 years ago, fucking phenomenal. He yes. has such a range that, I mean, he, so many can't even come close to comparing. I, I, I love him. I love talking to him. Uh, another one of these people mm -hmm. that I've, I've become very good friends with, we kind of came up in the same kind of uh, scene, right? We're both really into industrial music and both really into that whole thing, right? And we like to reminisce with each other about it, you know, especially during like the times of like lockdown and COVID. It's like yep. Nick and I kind of like felt this like yearning to be back to where, you know, our 20s when mm -hmm. we were, felt like we were part of something like that. Uh, I, I, I can't say enough good things about Nick. I mean, what, what have, what have your guys' experiences been with Nick? He's amazing. 
Oh my God, yeah. Amazing. We had the opportunity to have him on the show way back in the beginning of our first yeah. season, and it was probably one of the most fun and entertaining mm. 90 minutes we had a chance to spend with anybody yeah. because he's just a blast. I love him. Yeah. I love him to death. And everything he writes is outstanding. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he he's, go on. I was just going to say, he doesn't have a bad one that he's written. No. And, and then on, on top of that, he didn't have a bad bone in his body. You know what no. I mean? He's like the nicest guy. Like he's absolutely a sweetheart you know you can look at like sean and and uh simon and say yeah, i bet you those guys are fucking third balls i would have no, i would the, never look at are nick they nice and say they i know they're the nicest guys i'm fucking they kidding. really are well but, but I, I, would, I would never i would never look at nick i would never say anything bad about him i've not said anything bad about simon and sean no marion fucking fight starter <laughs> right I'm i, I sister, just I'm it's just like it's just like Nick really is, reminds, I had a Great Dane named Ripken, who was, I had this giant Great Dane, and Great Danes in general are like, Ripken wasn't, but they're supposed to be like these really sweet big dogs, right? And that's just kind of how I feel about Nick. He's just, <laughs> he's, he's just a really sweet guy. Yeah. He is. We yeah. love him. And he's, Give us more, Nick. We need more. Yeah. And he's super talented. So we I do. I, you. I appreciate that I convinced him to doing this uh, this original series on Godless, which is the Dog Days. He wrote the first one, which is based on a true story, mm -hmm. and I talked him into continuing it, which is bitching. I can't wait for the next one. It's Yay! coming soon, everybody. Nick, Nick reached out to me. He was a little drunk. <laughs> classic, <laughs> classic Nick. Blood classic blood. Nick. <laughs> classic cries, Nick. Um, before we get to the final big award for the 60s, which is Best Novel, I wanted to send a really heartfelt, uh, loving message to the entire community, uh, the godless community, the indie horror community overall, and everyone who has participated in making this something that I don't think any of us really thought it could be. Uh, not saying it's spun out of control. We all know it's difficult. But I want to thank you for everything you have done. Uh, a lot of people thank me constantly, and people know that that annoys me um, because it's not about me. It, it, it's This is about everyone. And sure, I release books on Godless, and I put out stuff and all that, but this is about everyone. And if people come at you and they beat you down and they say, you know, Fuck you, you can't write, this shit's out of control, this shit's stupid, this shit's gross, this shit's disgusting. Tell them to fuck off, man. I think that we've created something special here uh, where a bunch of different people's voices are being heard. And that's partly because of the social. But more importantly, it's about everyone coming together. And I know I preach unity for a really long time because I know that's that's our key to success as a whole so you know what i understand people have fucking beefs and shit like that and, and and i get that but think of the bigger picture here you guys love everyone the horror community as a whole whether you've decided to leave the godless platform and pursue other avenues or whatever it, it, don't turn your fucking back on any of these people man they're all fucking just as important as everybody else. Everyone's work coming out, and it comes out every single fucking day, is just as important for the end game as you releasing your book. And keep that in mind, because we're in this together. And if we want this to continue, if we want to go into March 15th of 2023, we need to broadcast this further, we need to get bigger, and we need to really start crossing over. And I don't mean selling out, and I don't mean going mainstream, and I don't mean censoring our content. I mean broadening our audience by showing people and telling them stories that are gonna fucking drive them in. That's what this is about. It's about telling stories, not about fucking writing the grossest thing in the world or writing the most offensive 
We're writing the most hardcore fucking extreme rape scene. This is about telling good fucking stories. That's what we need Godless to be about. It's about telling stories, man. And a couple of years from now, I want to tell this story about this first award ceremony we had for this thing that didn't exist a fucking year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Long live Indy! Right? Yeah. We, we, you, you've got control of your career. You can, you can do with it what you can. But just remember that supporting everyone else has now become a duty and a part of your career. Because mm-hmm. without us as a whole, we're broken, mm-hmm. fragmented, and fucked. And just like I said, that doesn't mean turning your back on people who are releasing shit elsewhere. That's, that should be encouraged, man. All this needs to be encouraged. It's about creativity, voices, and amplification. And it's about horror. It's about indie horror. It's a tough fucking fence to, to climb and get across, right? But I think that you need to think about it that way. It's important to show your love. Uh, so right on. <laughs> just, just at me next time, Drew. Yeah. <laughs> Hey man, I didn't think I was gonna. Get, I didn't think I, that was less of a bitch fest than that last thing I did, after the the day after the year anniversary, which I apologize for. That that rubbed people the wrong way. Who who? That's the way I look at. Who But you know what? Look at how much further we've come since then. Mm-hmm. Look at these people participating now who weren't before because they fucking get it. Yeah. It's not a hard thing to get, man. Get behind people. We're one. <laughs> We're fucking one like the Borg and shit. <laughs> right? I need more people to come to TikTok and help me preach to the children because I haven't got enough time to do it all by myself no more. No shit. So no get shit. y'all's asses over to TikTok and help me spread the good word. Wish there was more time in the day. I know. <laughs> right? Oh my God. <laughs> When's that baby do? November 29th. You mean sassafras? Yes. What's Pablo the name? Amish sassafras. It's a, it's no, a girl. Apple you just bottom bottom jeans. Her name's Brienne. It's like Game of Thrones. Sure. Yep, Brienne. Can't we just Brienne and, of Tarth? Anybody who names their no. Right? And anybody who names their kid after a character in Game of Thrones, like it's they should be questioning Total their parents. Loser, like you. I mean, <laughs> who would name their kid Tyrion? <laughs> some creep, <laughs> some psycho. That is not far from the truth. Yeah, <laughs> and we love you for it. <laughs> best, best novel. Here it is, you guys. This is the big E Ward of the day. E Ward. It's an E Ward. E It's the big award of the day. This is the best novel of 2021. Uh, I don't want to say that this was a fucking landslide, but this was a landslide. Yeah! <laughs> it was kind of expected. Uh, so without getting too far into it, we can talk about it afterwards. Let's see who won the best novel for 2021 at the 666 Awards. Thank you to everyone that voted for my novel, Left to You, for the best novel of the year for the inaugural 666 Awards. Um, I'm very humbled to have won. I know there were so many great novels put out last year that any one of them could have taken this spot. And for the fact that you guys picked my book out of the dozen or even like hundreds of other novels on this platform is truly humbling and I appreciate it. Uh, big thank you to, to obviously to Drew for setting up this platform, setting up these awards. You know, we, we wouldn't be here without him. I uh, see him every day, he's dedicated, he puts in that hard work. So without him, we, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be here right now. Uh, thank you to Dawn Shea from d Publishing who published this book. And last but not least, of course, thank you to my readers. I appreciate it. And um, I wouldn't be here without you guys. So look forward to more stuff for me in the future and keep reading that fucking sick horror.
This well, is my surprise face. This is my surprise face. I'm not surprised. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I know, I, I know. I, none of us are. I, I think that uh, not only is it just incredible, and, and this is so well-deserved and earned. Uh, like I said earlier, it's like, if I had chosen all these winners, these probably would have been the people I chose, and that's just yeah. so weird. Mm -hmm. uh, not only is this just an amazing book, um, why do you guys just fart? No, I burped. Oh. It, it like was in here. I didn't even, it didn't come out. It was just like, <laughs> Mary, I'm going to purr. It was me. Uh, I mean, I uh, am pregnant. It's to a be burp. expected. I'm like, oh my, oh my God. <laughs> Being attacked. Crazy. All right, let's get back to Danny. <laughs> uh, Dan Volpe. <laughs> That's how I pronounce his name now. Dan Volpe nice. was the very, very first person to sign up on Godless. Wow. Uh, he has supported me from the beginning. He has done everything in his power to help out. He has done everything in his power to help out Children of the Night. I think that he is just, it's, it's incredible how he's just rocking it. Mm -hmm. over a year. If you think about last year, when Billy Silver came out, actually came out, I think, in December of 2020, mm -hmm. uh, in how far he's come, and the amount of stuff he's put out, and the quality of what he's put out, it's it's stunning. Absolutely. I, 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 I can't think of another meteoric rise like this, and I don't want to take that away, and, and, and people to think of this as 100% a popularity contest. A ton of people voted for Left to You because it's an outstanding, outstanding fucking book. Absolutely. It is It is so authentic. And it's got all the the peppering of, a, a, of one of Danny's books. But it was just so much more. And, and, and I think that that's, this was really a passion project for him mm -hmm. to, to really separate himself. Uh, and, and and write and come out with left to you. I want to congratulate Don and D and T for this one too for picking. This yes, up. yes, uh, yes. It's just our choice. You know, um, it's so well deserved. I mean, where, how do you guys feel about this book? I I, I, I know the consensus around mm -hmm. the community. You know, but I I I, I think it's stellar. I, I think it's a. Uh, it's it's such a top-notch early career book. It's stunning. It's you know? stunning. And it, it, the emotional, there's an emotional depth to this book that you don't often find in our subgenre of horror. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's what really resonates with people because it is based on something that is truly horrific, mm -hmm. a true really devastating piece of our history as humans and it just takes it to the next level and it it, it, it it's absolutely marvelous this yeah. is no book better deserves this honor i would say like absolutely and, and, and you, know, you know what i i i once again this this there are so many good novels that came out this past year. But for some reason, the reason being that Dan can write like a motherfucker, uh, people just gravitated towards it. I, you know, it was like all the emails coming in, I just said, left to you, left to you, left to you, left to you, mm -hmm. promoting. And it's just like, you know. And can it, we talk it, about that cover? It's great. Mm, Don Noble. Genius. The big man, DN. Yup. Uh, Christina, I, I'd really like to hear your thoughts on it. I can't because that's the only one by him I haven't read. <gasps> you fucking crazy? She's I, savoring the moment. I have been told that it's very hard to read and I am not ready to put myself in that headspace just yet. So, but I own it and it's signed, so I have it. I just haven't 
I haven't read it yet. <laughs> well, now you have a reason. It's the best. I do because it now is I the like best of 2021. Asshole. This is yes. the biggest award yeah. of the year. You have. I to will read report it. back. I will report you back. You will fucking love it. Oh, that's yeah. outstanding. It, yeah, it's, but it's you a, know, I could have lied and said, "Oh, I read it. That was great." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pissing the bed, but thank you. <laughs> Left to you. See, it's about this guy, and he's it's a, about the guy. He's, a, he's a, a con man. See, he's a con. And man. this and this demon. <laughs> yeah. he, he does something, and then the book ends. <laughs> yeah. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just agree with Mary. You, you're right. It. it there, although there has been uh, a lot of fiction, and obviously a lot of non-fiction, written about this right. um, this atrocity and this terrible thing that happened in humankind history, uh, Dan Dan took it on uh, from a different front, and, and I really really appreciate him for doing that, and I want to congratulate him for doing this. I I, I don't think there's any chance that the Dopey 666 award is the only thing this book is gonna win because right. uh, it, it, it's resonated with the community overall. Oh yeah. And you know, uh, it's it's making Danny close to a household name, which is what we yeah. all want. Because I, I feel know, like another awesome person. He gave me a chance when he didn't have to, didn't know shit about me. He knew, he knew not to suffer, but anyway, Dan, thanks so much for everything you've done. Thank you so much for giving us this great, great, great piece of fiction. And uh, thanks so much for sending me your acceptance video. <laughs> so, like I said, Rain got me into it. She won for best short story for Mook. Is it Mukbang? It's Mukbang. Mukbang, Mukbang oh, Princess. Mukbang. Oh, things need to be spelled phonetically for me. <laughs> okay, best audio book. Best audiobook, The Unclean Verses by John Baltusberger. I listened to this one on the way home from a particularly hard day at work. And let me tell you, when I got home, I was shattered. So <laughs> pick it up. It's amazing. It and then, amazing. of course, our best novelette, Casey's Vengeance, one of the most anticipated titles from last year. Absolutely brilliant insane prequel to Killstream. If you love Killstream and you haven't read Casey's Vengeance yet, you need to unfuck that quick. Casey's Vengeance is something yeah. going on. <laughs> my big Hell song. yeah, she does. Best right? novella winner was Neil by the team <gasps> of Mick Hawk, Simon oh. McCarty, and Sean Hawker. Love these two guys. Steve love what they've come up with. Come up with something totally unique, original, and awesome. And even though something like their work would probably normally, you know, I'd be like, ah, oh, it's fucking gross, dude. Uh, I get it. And I get where they're coming from. And that's why I think they've made a name for themselves because of what they do is uh, it, it, it makes you feel something when you probably shouldn't, right? Right. It's great. Uh, and then, yeah, the, they're the two guys you always want to pull for, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, Christina, best anthology? Uh, Nick Robinson, May Cause Ocular Bleeding. Caution, May Cause Ocular Bleeding. You think about it? I love it. <laughs> I own it on like, I own it in digital and paperback. Like, Nick's I actually, what I did is I took the, uh, the digital file and I wrote it all up by hand. That's how much I love it. Oh, wow, wow. Way to upstage us, that's... How, I mean, how can we come back from that? No big it's, deal. It's tattooed on my back, so. <laughs> I, I got it micro tattooed on a piece of rice. Sure, Sheer Jan. Sheer Jan. Sure, Jan. And best novel, Dan Volpe. Congratulations, man. You got a very, very, very bright career ahead of you. The community fucking loves you. Everyone loves your writing, and this is a very, very, very well-deserved win for best novel of 2021 for the 666 Award is left to you. And we'll leave that to you, Danny. Thanks everybody for coming and watching the 666 Awards. We hope you had a good time. Like we said, we didn't want to do some generic show. We actually wanted to make it feel like it was coming from the community. 
and we wanted it to be important. We wanted it to be dynamic because we just didn't want to do some shitty show from some like gross fucking hotel that was like carpeted and has semen in the carpet and gross shit like that. We, we wanted to do something dynamic. We wanted to thank you. The three of us kind of came together and decided that we wanted this to be like a true celebration with what we could do, right? We didn't have money to go rent out a fucking gross hotel with semen all over the carpet. So this is what we do. We built it around. We built Which things together. Right. We, we appreciate everyone. <laughs> uh, we appreciate everyone who participated, everyone who voted. Everyone, you know what? 2022. Look forward to it. There is going to be another 666 Awards, and you could easily win. You know, I, I just think that stuff just seems to come out of nowhere. And yeah. I, I think that's kind of the 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 lesson that we've all learned here you know i mean but besides rain who took two wards because she's fucking radical and she's a genre bender and she's got her own cool fucking thing uh that that that's everything as a whole mm-hmm. keep being original keep putting out great shit and think about that you shouldn't have awards on your mind and all this dumb shit but we wanted to do it because we wanted to do something different because we don't think that the indie kind of like more hardcore, more edgy, more subversive shit gets the fucking love that it deserves from any other award show. And that's why we did that. We love you guys. You guys want to sign out? Bye. Gooses from the Mothers of Mayhem. We love you. Gooses and goshos. Yeah. <laughs> gooses and goshos. Hey, should, should, should we do the, our, our wacky, like, old-timey talk thing? Yeah, say the same on the 666 Award. You're here to win for horror. You're horror. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to go back and dub everything in that. Yeah. yeah. You have to I'm be gonna, all of our voices. I'm going to do voiceover for the whole thing. Yeah, see? I'm going to do, this here's Christina. Christina. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, voice over all of us. My Marion was to be, hi, my name, Marion. <laughs> that is very on brand. It is right? very good. 